Hello, I'm still not Cory, and I'm also still not a racist. Not for lack of trying, I don't know why I made that joke. Today I'm gonna to be reacting to some racist TikTok, but before I get into that, why don't you check out my Patreon? It's what allows me to make these videos for you, or you can check out my merch. I've got stupid baby t-shirts and a whole bunch of gay stuff, if that's what you're into. And also, also, don't forget to like this video and leave a comment down below. Why don't you answer this question? Let me know what color are your eyes? Let's start the video. Quick disclaimer, you can criticize these people and their ideas, but you cannot leave any internet hate for them down in the comments of my video or in the comments of their TikToks. I've got a zero tolerance policy for that. Just because they're racist, it doesn't mean that they deserve online hate. Okay, let's start watching. A racist test. Now we can actually find out if I am racist or not. Like I said at the top of the video, I don't think I am, but we'll see. Racist test, part one. A black guy walks by a group of five or six white guys. He looks at one of these white guys and says, Hey, what a snowman. All the other white guys hear this, get up, jump on the black guy, beat his ass. If you think these white guys are racist or have some kind of affiliation, if you thought KKK, if you thought white supremacy, if you thought anything of that nature, you may be a racist. Stick around for part two and find out. Okay, I mean, right off the bat, I'm pretty sure I know where this is going, okay? But let's just put it this way. Snowman is not a racial slur. There is no historical context to the word snowman, you know, being used to oppress white people. It is a race-based sort of, I guess, insult, but it is so incredibly tame that like, I don't think it's really worth jumping a guy for saying it. Let's watch part two. Racist test, part two. Now, obviously you're here because you felt some kind of way about the first one. Six white dudes beating up a black dude. Don't sound right, does it? But let me hit you with this real quick. Ah! <laughs> sorry, sorry. Six white dudes beating up a black dude? Doesn't sound good. But let me explain to you. Like, I'm not saying that this is what he's saying, but it very much sounds like what he's about to go on to say is, here's why it's okay to beat up a black man. I'm sure that's not. I'm sure it's not. It was just poorly worded. I'm gonna put you in the same scenario real quick, all right? You see a white dude walking past five or six black dudes, right? Mm -hmm. White dude walks past, says, hey, what up, my N-word? All six black guys, turn around, jump them on the spot. What do you think now? Ooh, you got me! You got me! What if you swap the races in this situation? Is it different? What? Dude, I swear to God, this is really, really irritating. Snowman and they're not comparable, okay? We understand that white people are not allowed to use that specific word, and not just white people. Anyone that is not black is not allowed to use that word because of the racial history behind it, because of its use in oppression, because people were brought over as bloody slaves and not treated as human. Now that is not quite the same as calling a white person snowman. I'm not saying that it justifies the attack, but what I'm saying is that the situations you set up are very, very, very different. There is a difference between a white person saying a word that has historically been used to dehumanize and oppress black people that is now being reclaimed by the people that it was used to dehumanize. There's a difference between that and saying the word snowman. Because snowman is kind of referencing the person's race, definitely. The person that is saying that could very well be racist. But those are very different things. There's a difference. There's a big, big difference between using a word with such a horrible history and using a word that is otherwise rather tame, right? Like, can you see that there? And then when you add in the idea of sort of societal oppression and how one of those things is actually adding on to that and the other one isn't so much, you can see how they're viewed differently. Again, neither of these things justify physical violence, but they're not the same scenario. My only point to this is if you think six one way is good and half dozen another way is bad, then that's, that's just straight up racism. But it's not. See, this is the issue. People that say things like this are just ignoring so, so much because they want so, so, so bad for racism to go both ways exactly the same. There is generally a difference between those two different kinds of racism. There is racism that is backed up by systemic oppression and there's racism that isn't. Now, racism is bad in all contexts. You should not be a racist person. I'm not standing here and defending black people that hate hate any other race, absolutely not. But what I'm saying is that you as a white person cannot compare the prejudice that you've experienced in your life to the prejudice that black people experience in their lives because the prejudice that you experience in your life isn't being backed up by the system that you live in. You have generally the power in that situation. It's kind of like an inconvenience, it's an insult, right? It's someone saying you're white and ugly, ha 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 ha. Being insulted based on your race as a white person just 
is not the same as that happening to a black person. You do not have the system that you live in constantly telling you that. You don't have that being reinforced by the society that you live in, okay? As a black person, when I was growing up, I hated all of my features because the media told me that I should, because non-white features are not deemed as attractive, okay? My skin wasn't deemed as attractive. I had everything telling me that I was different and wrong. You do not have that as a white person. When someone insults you based on your race as a white person, it hurts your feelings. That is sad and it's not good and we should not encourage racism in any form. But when a black person experiences racism, that is everything that they've experienced their entire life being reinforced. Those are different things. And I get it. It's upsetting and it's not nice. And I'm not saying that we should encourage it, but you need to stop putting that on the same level as racism that is backed up by systemic oppression. They're not the same thing. They're just not the same thing at all, okay? And you would do so, so much better to understand that, to realize that, and to actually try to combat racism in an effective way. Because it's quite clear that these people don't actually have an issue with white people being called racist or people saying racist things to white people. They don't actually have a huge issue with that. They just want everyone else to shut up about racism that black people experience. They want people to shut up about racism that South Asian people experience. They just want people to shut up about racism in general. So they're like, look, we all get it. It's all bad. You're hypocritical, blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. People are not going to shut up about racism. And just because people are racist to you, have a prejudice against you based on your race, that does not mean that you are on the same playing field as every other person of color, okay? We will not stop talking about racism. And if you want people to stop talking about racism, the best thing you can do is fucking end racism. And you're not gonna end racism by saying, hey, look, racism against white people is the same as racism against everyone, because it's fucking not. Not in, you know, the Western societies that most of us live in, right? The people watching this are probably not living in a country where white people experience systemic oppression, okay? If you're in the UK, if you're in the US, that just doesn't really fucking happen, okay? And it would be so much better for you to redirect that energy to actually helping solve the problem, man. Like just actually help solve the problem. And then you know what? Maybe at some point people would consider a black person saying snowman to be equal to a white person saying nigger. Okay? Jesus Christ. These people just want to play the victim so bad. They see other people experiencing systemic oppression and they're like, but, but, but what if it is about me? Why is not about me? I feel sad sometimes too. It's not about you. It is not about you. You do not understand this experience. And what you should do is listen. Instead of trying to make it about you, it's not about you. It isn't, I'm sorry. Go and play with your toys elsewhere. There are so many other things that can be about you. This isn't, you do not understand that experience. Shut the f up and listen. You can't think the first scenario is bad and the second scenario is good. I mean, you just can't do it. No, I don't think it's good. I don't think it's good for people to be beat up. And I think that most people watching that wouldn't think that it's good for people to be beat up. What he's doing here is setting up a kind of straw man where he's saying, look, if you think that one is good and one is bad, then you're a racist. But that's not what people are saying. That's not really what people are saying. People are saying these situations are different and comparing them in that way, it's not right because they're quite different situations. They're both bad, but one of them is bad in quite a different way. And the motivations of some people are more understandable than the motivations of other people because of the social context, because of the historical context. There are so many other factors involved in each of those situations that you are just wiping from the board. You're just ignoring them completely to say these two things are the same and if you think any different, you are racist. You need to build a straw man to make this point because you do not have a point, because you don't. Because it would be absolutely fucking insane to pretend that someone saying, hey nigger, is the same as someone saying, hey snow. That's fucking that shit. It's absolutely insane. Yes, are they both racist? Sure, absolutely. Is there a difference in the context to the racism in both cases? Fucking yeah. The difference in context is the key here, my friend. That is it. Stop building your straw man, put it all down, tear it down, I don't know, chuck it in the garden, make it a little scarecrow, and then start listening to people instead of playing the goddamn victim and hiding from this straw man that you built. Listen, racism is racism. Whether you white, black, brown, yellow, purple, tan, peel, teal, I don't care what you are. 
Racism is racism. Let's stop the racism. Let's all get to love each other, okay? See, saying racism is racism, I agree with on some levels, but it, it is ignoring so much, right? When you say racism is racism, you're not saying what I hope you're intending to say, which is we shouldn't be racist to anyone. What you're saying is that racism against white people is equivalent to racism against anyone else, which it, it just isn't. It, it just is not. There is a difference between being prejudiced and being prejudiced and that prejudice being backed up by the society that you live in. Just look at almost any aspect of life and you can quite clearly see the racial disparities in the statistics. Black women are four times as likely to die during childbirth as white women. In the UK, the United Kingdom, black women are four times as likely to die as white women during childbirth. That's ridiculous. The idea that black people have a higher pain tolerance has a material effect on black people across the UK and the US. Doctors genuinely have an underlying belief that black people have a higher pain tolerance and it leads to worse standards of care for black people. So this isn't just a case of someone being vehemently, disgustingly racist, shouting slurs. There's that insidious part of it as well. And so someone saying, hey nigger, to a black person is reinforcing all of that. Whereas I say, hey snowman, to a white person, I'm not really. You don't have the system set up against you. You're not dying at higher rates, being incarcerated at higher rates for the same things because of your race. Look at marijuana in the US, used at the same rate by white people and black people, black people are twice as likely to be arrested and charged for it as white people. It's ridiculous. Trying to say that these things are equal is just asinine. It is. You have to ignore so much. You have to twist reality just to try and make it work. Ignore all the stuff that doesn't fit your narrative and say racism is racism. It's all the same. Let's not be racist. Like, I get it. I know you want racism to be over, but that is not the way to do it. Saying that all racism is equal is, is just not true. And it trivializes the racism that people of color experience. That's what you're doing. You're trivializing racism that actually causes harm. I mean, put it this way, right? When it comes to racial violence, who is experiencing more of it? Is it white people experiencing violence based on their race? Or is it other races, black people experiencing violence based on their race? I'm pretty sure if you look at it, you'll find that it's more likely for a black person to experience violence because of their race than a white person. It, it's just, it's not comparable. There's, there's not much more I can say. These two things aren't comparable. Yes, we should end all racism, but the way to do that is not by saying that all racism is made equal. It doesn't mean that being racist against white people is acceptable, but it does mean that comparing it directly to other forms of racism is not helpful, useful, or accurate. Okay? What's an opinion you have that might piss some people off? I'm definitely in trouble for this one. But black people need to stop saying they can't be racist, especially to white people. My experience with black people is the fact that they don't like anybody that's not black and they will say it. That is true, I have seen that a lot. There is a lot of racism amongst black people. There's a lot of racism amongst like lots of different groups, right? And I've kind of already mentioned it. There's a difference between racism as a tool of systemic violence and racism being backed up by, you know, society and just kind of plain prejudice. So they're bad, but they're very different in what they are. And I do think there should be more conversations about the racism of, you know, black people, of South Asian people, of these sort of insular communities. I definitely do think that we should talk about that. I definitely do think that that needs to be unpacked, but it isn't exactly the same as the other way around. And I'm not saying that it's no less important. I'm just saying that it is different. It needs to be tackled in a different way. It needs to be spoken about in a different way. A lot of the insular nature in the black community comes from the experience of racism at the hands of white people. You don't wanna hang out with people that have been making your life hell for the entirety of your life. There is an understandable nature to that. Just because I think the root cause is understandable, that doesn't mean that it's justified, okay? It's not justified at all. It should still be avoided. I'm just saying that the cause is understandable. I'm sure we could all understand that. But let any white person say, oh, I'm gonna shop at a, a white only business. Oh, 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 he's racist. I don't even hear about white owned businesses. Man, f this. That's because white owned businesses are just the norm. That That's why, that, that is what that is. Like that is so irritating because you've started on a good point, right? You started on a really good point. Let's talk about the racism and insular nature of black communities. And then you've gone to, what if a white person said they'd shop at a white only business? That's different. That's not what we should be talking about. The reasons that black people shop at black businesses is to support 
black people because societally speaking, black people are disadvantaged. We want to help other black people because the system is pushing them down. White people aren't disadvantaged based on their race. So shopping at a white only business is not a choice to support a community that is disadvantaged. It is a choice to exclude others. That is what that is, right? And like, yes, shopping at a black only business is inherently exclusionary, but you're not shopping at it to exclude others. Isn't it? You're not doing it because you hate white people. You're doing it because black people need the extra support because they're disadvantaged. That is the point. Okay, these two things aren't comparable. Like let's actually talk about the racism of black communities in a serious way without just trying to justify shit that white people do that is actually fucking racist, man. That is so frustrating to me because we could have these good conversations, but so often they're just poisoned or twisted by people who don't wanna hear about racism or who aren't really thinking about it deeply. Should people not make the effort to shop at black owned businesses? I don't know. I think there's a limit to it, of course, but I don't think that supporting a historically disadvantaged community is a bad thing. It's a case of supporting the underdog, right? There's a difference between supporting the underdog and supporting the winner exclusively to exclude anyone else. Because when a white person says, I only shop at white owned businesses, that's because they don't want to shop anywhere else, right? It's not because they're like, oh, let's support white people because they need the leg up. That's not what they're saying. They're saying they don't want to interact with anyone that isn't white. And maybe that's part of it as well for black people. And that's something that needs to be tackled. But there is that other element to it. There is that genuine and valid part of it of I want to support black owned businesses because I want to support a community that experiences systemic racism and thus finds it harder to run these businesses and keep them afloat because the system is actively keeping them down. And that's not to say that white people don't experience difficulties when it comes to running and operating a business, but they tend not to experience those difficulties based on their race, whereas black people do. And so yes, that can go too far to excluding anyone that isn't black, but just supporting businesses that are the underdog essentially, I don't think that's inherently bad or necessarily inherently racist. White people say one hard thing in life Time to stir this pot. Can I just say, white people deal with hard things in their life. I think what the person was saying is, name one hard thing you deal with in your life based on your race, because of your race. Okay, just to make that fully clear. How about for starters, not having the ability to defend ourselves without being deemed a racist? How about the fact that the sheer audacity that I have to speak out on this topic is going to be countered with, aw, poor privileged white girl, racist bitch. So, I mean, this is a difficult one, right? Because there can be unnecessary pushback to white people talking about certain issues, but also when people are calling you a racist because you're being racist, that's not you being disadvantaged because of your race. Let's actually interrogate this. Are you being racist? Is that something you need to look at in yourself? Like, I don't think that a massive social problem for white people right now is being called racist, right? Because like, usually if someone's being called racist, it's because there's something racist about what they're doing or saying. And I don't think being called racist is a tool of oppression. I don't think it's something like a disadvantage that white people experience across the board because of their race. Because let's be realistic here. White people are the ones that are generally in power, right? So what would they gain from calling other white people racist just to keep white people down? Like that doesn't add up. It doesn't add up at all. I don't think that there is an epidemic of white people being called a racist unnecessarily just to quiet them for being white. I think there is a situation where a lot of people are pushing back against anti-racism in ways that can be somewhat racist. And when they're called out for that, they feel as though they're being targeted for their race, which isn't really the case. And when it comes to racialized insults, like, oh, poor privileged white girl, I, I think that those aren't really helpful necessarily. Unless, you know, someone is genuinely just blinded by their privilege and saying, you're being blinded by your privilege, your white privilege is blinding you. Like that is, that is a fine thing to say. But like these insults, I don't know, it's kind of weird. I don't really think that's you being disadvantaged because of your race. It really sounds like people are pushing back against your racism. Shut up, snow roach. I have never heard the word snow roach in my life, but I'm gonna have to say, I love it. I'm half white, I'm allowed to say it. I love the word snow roach, let's reclaim it. Or my favorite, colonizer. Seeing as how I'm actually Native American. So you're not white then, right? Like if you're Native American, then you're not white. Like that's, like, right? Like, right? Like, like then I, I just, Sure, maybe, you, you know, you are white and Native American, that's fine. But let's just get back to calling white people colonizers. 
don't do that. It is useless and pointless and just it doesn't help. It doesn't help because yes, historically colonization has been done by white people, but it, it doesn't help to call a white person a colonizer because that's not really how it works. The individual person that is born in that country, they're not able to do much. What do you want them to do? They were fucking born there. We could talk about the countries as a whole. We could talk about the people that make those decisions, but calling an individual white person that's just out there living their life a colonizer is absolutely pointless and you gotta stop doing it. Card carrying Abenaki to be exact. And I have been called out several times for cultural appropriation based on my skin tone. I guess I'm just too white. These aren't really issues about being white though. I mean, it's about being white passing, I guess. This isn't quite the same as like, you know, what, what a, like what a white person experiences because of their race. This is, this is someone thinking that you are not Native American when you are. That isn't a problem with being a white person because white people don't experience that because white people that are just like, you know, 100% white with nothing else racially or ethnically at all, they're not going to get called out for appropriating their own culture. Right? Like this is an issue with being white passing. This isn't an issue with being white. That's what your problem is, that you are white passing. And that is a whole thing of itself. And that actually comes into racism, right? Like this is not the take that you think it is. If this is what's happening to you, then anti-racism is the thing you should be after here. Like <laughs> this isn't happening to you because you're white. It's happening to you because you are not white, but people think you are, right? So I guess what I'm getting at here is that we all have hardships, but it should never be based on skin color. But sometimes it is. Like, it should never be based on skin color, but sometimes it actually is though, right? Like, we all agree, hardships shouldn't be based on skin color, but unfortunately, what systemic racism means is that some hardships are based on skin color. I've already mentioned in this video that in the UK, black women are four times as likely as white women to die during childbirth. That is based on race, and that is a hardship. Like, that is what racism is. Like, you cannot just say, oh, we all have hardships. We shouldn't look at it based on skin color. Like, yes, I fucking agree, but unfortunately that's not the world we live in, but I want to live in that world. That's what we're trying to do. That's what anti-racism is about. It's about trying to make it so that these hardships are not based on racism. And ultimately that we don't have these kinds of hardships, right? Like, like, fuck. But the mainstream media has made it abundantly clear that they're looking to divide us. Uh, here we go. It's the mainstream media looking to divide us, which like, yeah, I guess this is a bit offbeat, I think, right? Like the mainstream media is not making up racism to divide people. Racism does divide people and racism definitely, definitely does exist. Whether it be skin color, vaccination status, or political standing. Uh, uh, mm, uh, yep. So can we please stop focusing on color? America has always been a melting pot and that is a beautiful thing. America has not always been a melting pot. America was built by fucking slaves. Do you think it was a melting pot when people were brought over as property? It's not always been a fucking melting pot. Like, like historically, America has had so many different groups of people and so many of them fucking oppressed. Let's not pretend like people come to America and experience the high life, the same as any other American, without regard to skin color. That is not the fucking case. Redlining was a goddamn thing. Black people are still experiencing in America the ramifications of slavery. Still, over a hundred years later, still experiencing the ramifications of that. It is not just as simple as ignoring race. That doesn't make racism go away. That just makes you blind to fucking racism, right? Like, racism is going to exist until we dismantle and remove it. And just because it makes you uncomfortable to think about it, to think about it through that lens, that doesn't mean that just ignoring it is gonna make it all go away. I'm pretty sure that all anti-racists want to live in a society where the color of your skin does not influence your outcomes. But unfortunately, we live in a society where that is the fucking case. Your skin color can influence so many factors of your life. And that's what we're trying to avoid. That's what we're trying to dismantle. Covering your eyes and burying your head in the sand won't do sh** at all, I'm afraid. I'm sorry that being white passing has been difficult for you. Pretending like there's no such thing as racism, pretending like we all have equal outcomes and opportunities regardless of skin color, does not make it so. Doesn't make racism go away. Well, thank you for watching that one. Don't forget to get down to the comments and answer the question, what color are your eyes? Also like the video and subscribe. If you've watched to this point, you may as well. And also check out my Patreon. Look at these patrons going past here. Aren't they lovely? If you join my Patreon, you get bonus videos, a bunch of other cool stuff. And also I might thank you at the end of these videos. So I'm gonna thank some people now. Thank you to Mole. Thank you to Christopher A. Butler. Thank you to Ataraxia25. Thank you to Donito, Brad the Music Duck, and Maxwell17. <gasps> Oh dearie me, goodbye.